All right. Uh, tell us your name. My name is Christopher Cubis. I'm the Executive Vice President of the Elberton Granite Association. How do you spell your last name? Last name is spelled K-U-B-A-S. You're in charge, your organization is in charge of maintaining. Uh, we do have a role in the maintenance and preservation of the Guidestones. Uh, the property itself is actually uh, county property and they maintain the security and the maintenance of the property itself. Tell me about the Guidestones. I mean, there's a lot of conspiracy theories swirling about them. But, but kind of tell folks what they are. So the Guidestones were a, a, a monument that was envisioned by one man who represented a group of individuals. Mm -hmm. They wanted a monument and uh, they had the funds to create that monument. So in around 1979, they showed up in Elberton asking if the Elbert, uh Granite Association could help them to uh, find somebody to build the, the monuments. And um, we did. Uh, they, they were... Uh, built by a local manufacturing company here in Elberton, which is actually no longer in business. It was the Elberton Granite Finishing Company. Um, they were built and they were erected in March of 1980. They became a big tourist attraction. They did over the years, especially as the internet uh, gave them more exposure. Uh, they really they took off in popularity. So, T Tell us about some of the issues that you've had over the years with, with these stones. You know, the, the stones have uh, messages on them, uh, guides for humanity, and some people find them offensive, some people don't. Uh, over the years, we've had uh, messages spray painted on the, on the guide stones, uh, using them for various uh, personal agendas, maybe, um, but we've never had this level of damage uh, ever done to the guide stones. If, if you don't want to answer this question, don't. Over the past at least two months, we know of a particular person who was right, executive order number 10 wanting them demolished. Have you seen an increase in, in maybe unwanted activity since then? I have not. There's obviously been a lot of uh, social media um, comments and things that are made that we become aware of, but we haven't had any real issues from uh, the fallout of, of those statements that were made by that political uh, individual. Um, but I don't know that this is not related in some way to the, the statements that were made. How bad is the damage? And, and what's, what's your, I mean, did it just break your heart to get up there and see? It did. I'm sad not just for Elberton and Elbert County, but I'm sad for the United States and for the world. These were a tourist attraction. And it was not uncommon for people from around the world to be up here at any given time. I've, I've met people from Australia, from uh, China, from all over the world here at these Guidestones. We probably have in excess of 20,000 visitors a year here. You know, it's free, it's open to the public, there's no, there's no um, uh, fee to get in to see them. So people just come and go. We don't keep track of who's up here. We actually had to install cameras several years ago after the vandalism got so bad. But... Um, you know, it does break my heart. Uh, you know, if, if you don't like the message that was written on them, you know, that's understandable. That's your prerogative. But, you know, there's no reason to take it away from other people that might not find it and interpret it the same way. How, how bad is the damage? One so of one of the wings has is, is completely uh, been uh, destroyed. It's, it's actually laying on the ground. I can see it. Uh, we haven't been up to the site because the bomb squad is trying to clear the area. But I can see it, and it's it's actually on the ground. Um, the capstone piece has uh, been damaged, and I'm sure the other three wings and the center support probably have damage to them as well. And that surveillance is 24-7, right? As, if the cameras were up and running, uh, then yes, it would have been 24-7. It goes to the 911 dispatch center. So there may be video. There could be. I don't know. Um, that, that would be something that you would have to get from the county or from the emergency manager. What does the stones symbolize? What do they mean? You know, they meant something different to a lot of people. Uh, you can go online, and, and forgive me, I don't, I don't know all of them. There's ten of the uh, messages, guides for humanity, um, that were written on there. And they talked about various uh, different things in society and issues uh, in, as, as a human race. Five um, different languages? And they were in, uh, yeah, they were in five different languages. And, you know, uh, some people didn't like certain messages that were on there. They interpreted them. 
in, in very negative ways. And, and it was built to withstand an apocalypse. I mean, it was supposed to, after humanity was gone, I remember the initial, <laughs> that that was supposed to, to help save humanity. It, it, yes, <laughs> if you think of like the Stonehenge, for yeah, instance, exactly. you know, here we are several thousand years later and Stonehenge is still standing. Imagine if it had writing on it and you could read what the people of that time thought was important and wanted to leave for future generations. That's what the guide stones were. They were, they, they may not have been meant for us here today. They were meant for a future uh, population uh, after maybe a cataclysmic event to help them learn and know what, what we had encountered and for them to avoid. What was the name of the group that uh, funded this? So we don't really know the name of the group that funded them. Uh, the one man that did come to town uh, went by the pseudonym of R.C. Christian. He came in, he had the funds available uh, to build them, and that's what, you know, the, the granite industry, we're in the business of man, mon manufacturing monuments. So when somebody comes and says, I've got a, a monument, I want to build it, and they've got the funds to pay for it, we're going to build it. And we do it regardless of race, creed, religion, any, any, anything else, the genders, anything. If somebody needs a monument, that's what we do. And this was just another monument that we built. It's a testament to the craftsmanship of the granite industry here in Elbert County. Those, each one of those wings is 16 feet 4 inches tall. It's 1.7 inches thick and it's 6, 6 wide. They weigh about 42,000 pounds each. To quarry something of that size and get those four of them that precise and then to letter them with the sandblasting that it took to letter those languages, that is utter craftsmanship that you would not find anywhere else. They, they, they had to be done here. And uh, that's what we look at them, and that's what the majority of Elbert Countyans look at them, is the testament to the craftsmanship of the granite industry. Thank you very much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you good? Uh, uh, all right. Your name is Tom.